השם נעשה ונצליח והשם עלינו ברחמיו ירוויח. Today we speak about the wife of Rabbi Akiva. And in the end we try to understand what was so important about her. You know in English you say behind every great man there is a great woman. So we'll see today what was the character trait of Rahel. And I'll give a bit of a background. We spoke about Rabbi Akiva before. I'll give a bit of a background. Who was Rabbi Akiva for us to understand? So it will help us to understand who she was, that great woman. So Rahel was the wife of Rabbi Akiva. She was the daughter of <laughs> Kalba Savua. Kalba Savua. Kalba Savua is a nickname. It's not his real name. I will explain. I will go step by step. Hefti, but you look a bit worried. Don't worry. I'll try to answer all the questions. And I'll give time also to ask questions. Kalba Savua was a rich man that lived during the time of the Second Temple. He was one of the richest men that lived in Jerusalem during the Second Temple. Who was Kalba Savua? To understand that, we have to go to the Gemara in Masechet Shabbat. The Gemara in Masechet Shabbat in page 147, folio 1, explain to us why they call them Kalba Savua. Kalba Savua is not in Hebrew, it's in Aramaic. I will explain that. Why do they call him like this? And also giving us his name. His name was Yeshua ben Kapos. That was his name, Yeshua ben Kapos. Kapos, remember the name. Kalba Savua, if you translate Aramaic to Hebrew, Kalba is a dog, Kelev. Savua, it's a person that's full. He can't eat anymore. A full dog. A dog is not hungry. What kind of a name is that? So the Gemara explained why did they give him that nickname. Not for nothing he'd been called Kalba Savua. Kalba Savua being called like this because every poor person that used to walk to his house and is hungry like a dog used to leave the house when he's full, not hungry anymore. His house was open 24-7 for poor people to come and eat. And that called Kalba Savua. Rahel was his daughter. Obviously she came from a very privileged house, very privileged household. She didn't need nothing. She had everything that the person can ask during the time of the Second Temple. Obviously she didn't have cell phones, she didn't have Wi-Fi. But she had everything that you wanted at that time. Rahel have everything that she wanted. And the Gemara in Masechet Ketubot. Rabota, I'm going to bring three Gemarot from Masechet Bavli, and then I'm going to move to Masechet Yerushalmi in the end. And all of that sources to try to understand who was the father-in-law of Rabbi Akiva, Kalba Savua, who was Rahel, and who was Rabbi Akiva. So the Gemara in Masechet Ketubot, page 62, folio 2, that means Samech, Bet, Amud Bet, there the Gemara tell us that Rabbi Akiva, at that time called Akiva, was one of the shepherds that worked for Kalba Savua, for the father of Rahel. And Rahel, that lived, can you, undo, can you imagine, and a mention, she saw that shepherd, that had a beautiful character trait. Not only that, that he had exceptional character trait. And one of them, the most important, that he was very modest, very down to this. And when Rahel saw that, she offered him, and she said to him that she willing to marry him if he'll study Torah. Hazal tell us that Rabbi Akiva lived 420. The first 40 years of his life, Rabotai couldn't read, couldn't write. He didn't know the Aleph Bet. 40 years old, cannot read, cannot write, nothing, burnished. 
When Kalbasavua heard that his daughter planning to marry Akiva at that time, Rabbi Akiva, the greatest sage, obviously, that was very upset. There's better shidduch for you. What are you taking that? What can he offer you? He's a shepherd. Rahel was a different woman. Rahel didn't give up. She married him. Her father, Kalbasavua, was so cross that he took an oath that she cannot benefit from his money, from his wealth at all. That means that Rahel, that have everything that she wants in life, in one second, turn from the top to the bottom, the poorest person that you can imagine. The Gemara in Masechet Nedarim, page 50, folio 1. Listen what the Gemara tell us. The Gemara tell us that Rabbi Akiva and Rahel were so poor that they didn't have any place to live. They live in a barn. And every morning, Rabbi Akiva used to take the straw for hair. And he used to say to her, if I have money, I will make for you Yerushalayim Shel Zahab. That's how the Gemara say, I will explain that he will make for her a crown that made with gold, with the shape of Jerusalem. Yerushalayim Shel Zahab. Yerushalayim Shel Zahab. Jerusalem of gold. He will make for a special crown. I'll get to it in the end. One night, it was a very cold winter night, they hear a knock on a bomb. Rabbi Akiva opened the door. Akadosh Baruch Hu sent Eliyahu Anavi to them. And Eliyahu Anavi said to Rabbi Akiva, my wife just given a birth to a baby. Can you lend us a little bit of straw so we can put the baby to cover him? It's too cold. Obviously, Rabbi Akiva giving him straw and everything. And the Gemara asked there, why Akadosh Baruch Hu have to send Eliyahu Anavi to Rabbi Akiva to ask for straw? The situation of Rabbi Akiva and Rahel was so bad that they have nothing. Imagine living on a bomb. Akadosh Baruch Hu wanted to bring the moral up by how? By showing them that there is poor person, kivyachol, poorer person than them. He sent the Liyawa Nabi. So Rabotai, I'm going to put a lot of emphasis on about the suffering that Rahel had to put with. And in the end, I will explain why. But still, it didn't, it's not so simple to take a shepherd at the age of 40, doesn't know Aleph Bey, cannot read, cannot write. How do you convince a man like this to go and study? How do you send your husband at 40 years old with your child that going to grade one? To school together. Can you imagine? We never saw that. But the Midrash, the Midrash Agadol tell us a story. Rahel was a smart woman, very smart woman. And she said to Akiva, to Rabbi Akiva, take the donkey, take wet mud, a lot of mud, and rub it over the donkey. Rabbi Akiva done. He knew that he's dealing with a special woman. And he done it. After he done it, Rahel took little seeds and planted in the mud. And she was watering for a few days. After a few days, those seeds turned to spout, and spout started growing. She said to him, Akiva, take that donkey to the market and see what's happening. So you can imagine a man entering the market and everyone looking at them. What is that? A donkey that grows seed on him? I never saw. And the tumult the first day and everyone talking. And the second day and the third day. But the fourth day, is everyone already gets used to it. No one starts speaking. And every day, Rahel used to ask Rabbi Akiva, what's happened? And every day he tell her, you know, the first day it was so excitement, many people come to see. 
The second day, a bit less, but was still excitement. The third day was a little bit, you know, not so much. But the fourth day, people get used to it. She said, Rabbi Akiva, listen to what you're saying. On the first day, it will be excitement. On the second day, it will be excitement. But the fourth day, it will be the end. It says it's the same going to be when you're going to go and study with your son. Everyone might going to laugh on you on the first day. But the fourth day, everyone will get used to you. And Akiva gone. And he study. We see from here that Rahel was a special woman. She know how to convince a man in the age of 40 or even more to go and study. The Gemara and Masechet Ketubot continue and tell us in page 62, folio 2, when Akiva was start to study before he became Rebbe Akiva, she sent them to study for 12 years in a yeshiva. 12 years, that means he doesn't come home. For 12 years, he doesn't see home. Rabbi Akiva gone to study for 12 years. Torah. Now imagine, who's going to provide? No one to provide. Rahel didn't give up. Her father, Kalba Savua, took her oats. It's not so simple. He can't. He sees what his daughter suffering. He can't do nothing. Rahel used to grow up hair and used to sell it. We'll get to it also later on in Yerushalmi. You can imagine what life of poverty for 12 years. After 12 years, Rabbi Akiva coming home. And when he came home, he was behind the wall and he heard an old man speaking to his wife. And that old man was a wicked man. And he said to Rahel like this, look at you. You like a widow without a husband. Your husband left you. Going to study Torah, he doesn't care about you. He doesn't care about the kids. Where's the providing? Look how you live, poverty. Look how poor you are. Rabbi Akiva, keep quiet, doesn't say a word. Rahel, that was a special woman, you know what she said to that man? I wish that he can hear me. If he can hear me, may please God he'll stay for another 12 years and study. Rabbi Akiva didn't say a word, turn around, walk back to study for another 12 years. The Gemara asked, Hazal asked, why did Rabbi Akiva didn't go and knock on the door? My wife, I didn't see you for 12 years. My children, he didn't enter. Hazal answered like this, that if you want to get a sage like Rabbi Akiva, you can't go and say, to, go and say hello. That, that he turned back, and he gone back without saying hello. That's what made him really Rabbi Akiva, the greatest sage. The greatest sage that we have. That during the count of the Omer we count, we moan for his 24 students that died. 24,000. Rabbi Akiva, after 12 years, another 12 years, returned back. That means 24 years, Rabotai, he wasn't at home. The wife didn't see him. The children didn't see him. As a matter of fact, he doesn't almost recognize his children. He doesn't know who they are. The, til the children doesn't recognize their father. Whatever they remember, it was 20 years ago. We don't understand that. It's not for our level. That's why we're not in the level of Rabbi Akiva. Rabbi Akiva, everyone heard. How old was he then if he married to a 80. Father? Rabbi Akiva, sorry, he wasn't 80. He was an age close to 70. Work it out. He was 40, 45 when he left. Another 24 years in the 70s. So it was five years after he got married, he went to Yeshiva. Plus minus, because he still has to learn Torah. You know, he have the kids. 
Sanef to go to the Haider, grade one, I call it, but it's not grade one. You know what I'm saying? He was in his 70s. He was in his 70s when he came back. When Rabbi Akiva came back, Hazal tell us, 24,000 students marching behind him. Rabota, you don't understand that. 24,000 students behind him. Everyone here that Rabbi Akiva coming back to Yerushalayim. One of the famous richest person was his father, as I mentioned. Everyone wanted to see the great sage, Rabbi Akiva. Everyone wanted to get a brocha. But it's not simple. These 24 students, everyone protecting him. Everyone singing. You can imagine. So, Kalba Savua is the rich man, you know, money buy everything. Okay, he managed to come to speak. He said to Rabbi Akiva, I need to speak to you. I have a problem. He said, speak. Rabbi Akiva recognized his father-in-law. His father-in-law didn't recognize him because his father-in-law, looking at his son-in-law as a shepherd, that's what he remembered. He said, and what can I help you, mister? He didn't tell him that he know who he is. He said, I have a daughter that she married to one of my shepherds. And I took her oath that she will never benefit from my money or from my wealth. And I regret it. I want to do a toyman of the vow. Rabbi Akiva said to him, okay. Do you really regret it? He said, yes. Rabbi Akiva said, I'll ask you a question. If you would know that that man that she married will be a Talmud Hacham, will you support her? Will you take that oath? He said, never. I will never take that oath. I will never put her in that position. He said, okay. Tell me, if she would marry a man in my level, he said, if she would marry a man in your level, I will give her a half of my wealth, I will give them. He said, are you sure? He said, yeah. He said, I'll tell you, I'm your son-in-law. I'm Akiva that you remember. He said, in that case, you have a half of my wealth. And the Ghazal say, that's how Rabbi Akiva start to get rich. That's one of the three things of Rabbi Akiva who become wealth. There's other story for Rabbi Akiva. So, now, Rabbi Akiva continue with his house. He come to see his wife. His kids, what's happening? Where's my kids? You can imagine 24,000 students, plenty men walking with the rabbi, and suddenly they see a lady with shoes that, if you consider it shoes, staring clothes, staring shoes, broken, and everyone's tried to push her aside. Lady, it's not a place for women here. It's only for men. It's the great rabbi. And they didn't give her a chance to talk, and they're pushing her aside, and this one pushing her, but she's determined. Until Rabbi Akiva suddenly saw what's happening, and he lifted up his hand, and he said to everyone, everyone become quiet. He said, let her come. <coughs> let her come. And he said to them, the Torah that I have, and the Torah that you have, that's her Torah. The Torah that I merit to learn and the Torah that I merit to teach you all here, it's her Torah. Please respect her. Let her come. That's Rahel. Obviously, Rahel came. Everyone was shocked. The Gemara in, Maseche, in, in, the Gemara in Yerushalmi, Masechet Shabbat, in Perik Daf. That's the name of the Perik. It's called Daf. In page 42, folio 1, the Gemara tells us a story. That Rabban Shimon ben Gamliel. The wife saw that Rabbi Akiva, after he became rich, he made the crown from gold what he promised his wife. And the Gemara in Masechet Shabbat in Yerushalmi, in page 42, folio 1, the Gemara say that Rabban Gamliel, that was the Nasi in that time, said to him, tell me, 
Rabbi Akiva made his wife a crown with the shape of Jerusalem made from gold. What did you make for me? She was jealous. Rabban Gamliel answered like this. Listen what he said to her. He said to her, tell me, did you cut your hair that I can study Torah? Did you live the life of poverty that I can study Torah? She didn't have an answer. So he didn't give her a crown of gold. But Rabota, that's not the end. What do we learn from you? Sorry? So Brian, I yes? That. Who is the person who queried that? The wife of Rabban Gamliel. She was jealous of the wife of Rabbi Akiva Rahel because you remember that I mentioned that he promised her he'll be rich. He'll make yeah. for a crown made of gold. But Hazal said that that's not the end. I didn't want to tell you. He made for her a special bed made from gold. To constipate for all the 24 years. Sorry, my... I'm almost crying. Sorry. Akon here? No, 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 I'm okay. I'm, almost, I'm just, because I'm so attached to it, I'm almost crying. I'm trying to hold my, my tears. Rabota, why am I telling you that story? Why is it so important, Rahel? We know that behind every successful man have to be a special woman. To have Rabbi Akiva, no one going to be judged here. Why are you not Rabbi Akiva? Everyone going to be judged. Why are you not yourself? When I go to Shamaim, they say, David Levy, or David Ben Sion Levy, why you wasn't yourself? They're not going to charge me why I wasn't Rabbi Akiva, Moshe Rabbeinu. But why am I telling you all of this? Because I want you to spread the message. And there is a very important message. I don't know how many of you know the rates of divorce in this country for the youngsters amongst the Jews. Very high. Why? Very high. Very high. Why? Because women, they think that we China, today everything is so cheap. It doesn't work, throw it, buy a new one. Women and husband and wife not willing to put enough effort to work on their marriage. That message is for the young couple to understand that sometime in life, not only the, physic, the, physic, the physical, thing that we have is important. <coughs> Rahel that have everything that she want in life, she put it aside. She suffered for 26, 27 years before Rabbi Akiva gone, before he start learning. If not, five, six years before. So 30 years she suffered poverty, but she never gave up. And today, a little bit of trouble between the couple. He doesn't earn enough, or she doesn't. She She's not uh, organizing the house properly, or whatever. It's easier. Let's break out. What about the kids that's suffering from it? I'll tell you a story that I never told anyone for many years. I have a friend that grown up with me in the same class. We was in the same yeshiva. I don't want to mention who he is, because you will know. When we was 45, his parents divorced. <coughs> he was already married with children. He took it so badly that he collapsed. And one day I get a phone call, can we meet for coffee? I say, sure. Where are you? No, wherever. We go on to meet for coffee. And he told me the story. So what I'm trying to say People think that it's easy, let's break out, let's go, divorce. Work out on your marriage. Learn a little bit, I'm not expecting you to live 30 years of poverty, but work on your marriage. This is not China that you can change toys. And Hazal tell us, zivugam shel Israel kikreati yamsuf, that the mitch making to find a wife it's as hard of splitting of the sea. It hurt me so much when I hear that couple just divorcing. What is that? What is that? You're changing socks? 
What is it? Work a bit on your marriage. What are you losing? Rahel, over 30 years of poverty, she never gave up. So put a little bit. You're not going to live a life of poverty. No one lives a life of poverty, Baruch Hashem, today. No one, I didn't hear Jewish couple living in a bomb. So work on your marriage a bit. Give up a bit of effort. From both sides, I'm not speaking only to the woman or only to the man, to both. Be'ezrat Hashem, I hope that that message will help many couples to understand who was Rahel and to try to adopt a bit of a character trait, to understand the thing in life sometimes get to a difficult. Sitting on the rocks. But it doesn't mean that we have to fall off the rocks. We have to learn how to survive it and how to put the effort. Be'ezrat Hashem, that we shall never hear any more divorce amongst the Jewish people. We should only hear about good news. Yes. Yeah, so the show wasn't about Rabbi Akiva, but you're asking. So what's happened? How did make Rabbi Akiva to understand that he can study in the age of 40? So he was walking, and he saw that the drip of water dripping on a stone and that stone, from all the drip, from every drip, start making a cave, like a small dip. And he say, if a water can penetrate a stone, I can study. You follow? But the show is not about Rabbi Akiva because we explained it. So by Ezrat Hashem, we should all merit to try to adopt the character trait of Rahel, Every woman will have it. Every man also should be strong and not to look only about the physical thing in life. There's other things. Yes, is there right. one thing is asked, I was inspired. I was in Tiberias. And I met someone there when I was going, when I went to Rabbi Kippur's grave. And this guy actually took me around, myself and my wife around. And he took me and said, the amazing thing is people come here and they look at all the great people never go to Rabbi Kiva's wife, Rachel's grave. And he took me to the grave over there and to the memorial there, which is very close to the, to, on the waterfront, if not on the hill, which is relatively close where the, you know, the swimming pool is over there. The public swimming pool. The public swimming pool. In Tiberia. And I was so impressed and incredible, because I never knew the story at all. And you know, as you, as you said, there were tears in my eyes when I read through and I took the photographs over there with my wife. And I said to him, I would just like to hear a shirt, just because to get a little bit more of the actual detail. I just want to say thank you very much. Sure. Yeah. You expressed yourself incredibly well, as you always do. It's made it even you. more interesting. So thank you for that. Sure. Yeah.